There's a large audience out there that will drop $60 at the mere utterance, it's like Diablo with. In Borderlands' case, it's Diablo with guns, a mixture that has been attempted and failed in the past. However, with Gearbox at the reins, optimism was high, and it appeared as though the combination could at last be perfected. Does the role-playing shooter manage to meet expectations, or are gamers left with a Hellgate London aftertaste? Immediately after choosing a character, a mysterious woman hacks into the player's heads-up display to tell them about the Vault of Legend. The story begins when she asks for help and promises vast riches, more than enough motivation for the average mercenary. In a way, Borderlands is very reminiscent of a spaghetti western, and follows a similar formula to the classic film The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. The player is the good, the military wing of the Atlas organization is the bad, and an insane scientist named Patricia Tannis is the ugly. The setting of a lawless, dusty old west town is replaced with the unfortunately named Pandora, a near-barren planet that serves as a perfect backdrop for what could have been an epic tale. Sadly, that's about where the story ends. Instead of fleshing out the characters and lore, it plays out like a massive multiplayer online RPG, with the mercenaries picking up missions from bounty boards and completing them for experience and items. From time to time, NPCs will ask for help as well, moving the story forward and inching the player towards the vault. In a way, this works both for and against the game. On the one hand, it helps the replayability, since the main missions take a backseat to riding around and completing other jobs, without needing to worry about cutscenes or long story quests. On the other hand, there's a general lack of motivation, since nothing in the story is all that interesting. Either way, Gearbox, with their history of telling wonderful character-driven stories in the Brother in Arms series, should have been able to do much better. Gearbox's claims of blending together the RPG and FPS weren't exaggerated. Borderlands does play like a seamless mix of the two, especially when compared to other games that have tried to blend them in the past. The gameplay, on the whole, feels fantastic, granting critical hits for striking opponents' weak spots. Enemies' AI might be rough around the edges, and it's impossible to ride around Pandora without running into an occasional glitch, but it's usually not too distracting. The splash of RPG makes everything feel different than the average shooter. When enemies are hit, numbers pour out of their bodies, indicating the damage they've taken. It not only aids in the presentation, but gives the same satisfaction and instant gratification that helped propel Modern Warfare's multiplayer. Where it's more of an RPG is in the mission structure. The 150-plus missions take many forms, from collecting objects to killing a certain number of enemies. After selecting one at the bounty board, all that's left is to drive to the waypoint and complete the task at hand. This seemingly simple act is hindered by a lack of a minimap and awkwardly shaped areas, both of which make constantly checking the menu a necessary annoyance. After a little while, fast travel between different locations is open, but even then it's still a chore to get from place to place. The issues with travel are lessened thanks to Borderlands' forgiving attitude towards player death. After running out of health, players are partially crippled, but can jump back into battle after dropping an opponent and earning a second wind. If unable to do so, they just respawn at a nearby checkpoint with all of their progress intact. Another RPG element lies in the character progression and class system. Each of the classes has its own skill tree, allowing players to specialize by spending points in three class-specific brackets. Each class also has unique skills, which represent the largest difference between them. Whether it's dropping a turret or gaining superior melee for a limited time, the special skills help differentiate the characters. Different enhancements can be equipped to customize the characters even more. Beyond tweaking some color options, there's really no physical customization in Borderlands. It seems like it would have been an obvious choice to allow players to create their character and modify their own stats, and different shields modifying the character's appearance would have helped in lieu of some sort of armor system. Instead, the only way to tell characters apart is by what gun they're using. Then again, that's not really a bad thing. In trailers, Gearbox promised somewhere in the ballpark of 87 trillion guns. While that number might be a little bit inflated, there's no question that Borderlands holds the title for the most weapons in a game. Playing from a randomized loot table, nearly every weapon drop is unique, sporting different attributes, abilities, and physical appearances. Because of this, every time a weapon hits the ground, it's a mad dash to check it out, comparing it to others, and deciding which one to use. Keeping an armory is essential due to the different types of foes that might pop up, and finding new, powerful loot is immensely rewarding and incredibly addicting. Borderlands is best played with friends, and Gearbox made sure that cooperative play is as simple as possible. Apart from including split-screen, a rare occurrence these days, the online game is paramount to the Borderlands experience. At any point, players can join together to complete quests, fighting through the entire campaign with up to four people. 
With each additional mercenary, the difficulty is ramped up, creating more of a challenge. While obviously not the point of the game, dueling and arena combat are both available, allowing players to prove their worth in battle against one another. Since it's not built around PvP, it's not really all that entertaining, but does its job of allowing disputes over who gets what weapon to end in the necessary bloodshed. The only real issue with the multiplayer is the lack of a trading system, which hurts any chance Borderlands has at establishing an online economy. Instead, it's based on the honor system, and the hope that no one runs off with anything dropped on the ground. Though it might have been confusing at first, the shift from realism to cell shading definitely worked in Borderlands' favor. It presents a unique look, more like concept art come to life than Wind Waker and Jet Set Radio's cartoon style. The occasional splash screen introducing a boss tries to secure a specific mood and style, attempting to be crude and cool at the same time. While it succeeds in looking unique and appealing, it slowly putters out. As the jokes become fewer and more repetitive, what was almost an incredibly stylish game slowly slips into the ordinary. Cities are bland and forgettable, and with the exception of the claptrap droids, none of the characters leave lasting impressions. It feels as though once the graphical style was established, Gearbox felt as though it would be enough to carry the rest of the game. But despite looking wonderful, it can feel utterly dull. The presentation doesn't get in the way of enjoying the experience, but it certainly feels like a missed opportunity at creating a memorable world. Borderlands is a fantastic beginning to what will hopefully become a great franchise. While it lacks certain elements that would have made it more memorable, the sleek gameplay and beautiful graphics represent a stellar example of genres melting together, something which too often fails in execution. After completing the game, a second playthrough is opened, turning up the difficulty and starting the story anew, something that many gamers will likely end up taking advantage of. It might be hard to find time for Borderlands in this crowded holiday season, but it shouldn't be ignored, and it's something everyone should at least try out. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the full text review on GamerVision.com.